This is Todoodi. This is a open source task and project management tool. And I'm going to show you how you can get this all up and running with Docker and more specifically Docker Compose. So as per usual, what we'll do, we'll have a quick look around. I'll take you through Todoodi. Uh, I'll show you how it all works. And then I'll show you how you can get this all set up if you like the look of it. Before we get started, big thank you to my YouTube members. I will list them somewhere on the screen. Uh, your support is awesome. And remember, if you do need one-on-one -on -one support with me, that's how you get it. Become a YouTube member, jump into the Discord, and I'll help you out. Also, it's just a great way to show support. So this is Todoodi, like I was just saying before. So I've got this up and running. This is my own little instance I have up and running right now. So on the left hand side here, we've got a few things. We've got the up and coming, like the dates, so we can see our tasks. But then we've got projects, notes, areas, and then tags. So what I'm going to start off with first is the areas. So areas, we could have many different things. So for example, I have an area called self-hosting and this will hold all of my self-hosting projects. So does that make sense? So we'd have a higher thing, which is self-hosting, or maybe you're doing home renovations. So home renovations would have projects and then in projects you have tasks. So for example, if I click on self-hosting, so I clicked in the self-hosting and we can see now we can see the project and I've got a project in, in, in here called Raspberry Pi cluster, right? So this is just a project that I have an up and running. And if I click in this, we can see in that I have a task and you can have many tasks and I have got here by Raspberry Pi 5. So if I click on it, you know, you can see you can add any notes that you would like, any due dates, the priority, and if it started or not. If you're familiar with any sort of task project management, it's pretty much the same, but the great thing is we can self-host it and it's very lightweight and straightforward. So we can also add another task. So uh, what would this one be? Uh, let's just go buy networking gear, hit enter. Just like that, we have a new task, all right? And the great thing is it works great on mobile as well. So I'm gonna go to their GitHub right now. This is a GitHub, a link to this will be in the description. And I just want to also make it really clear that they're on version 0.36, right? So it's still quite new. You might find bugs, and but they have a roadmap that I'll show you in a second uh, on what they're planning on adding. So, you know, with like self-hosted project, with open source projects, it's a community driven thing as well. Uh, the developer, you know, will, will need support and you can support them in many ways by contributing. Uh, there's a Patreon on the side here. So if you want to sponsor this project, check it out. But I'm just going to scroll down and you can see they've got some screenshots here of what it all looks like with all the uh, tags and all of that good stuff. But here it is on mobile as well. So they've done a really good job of making sure that it looks good on mobile. And then this is the roadmap. So you can see here all the things that they're planning on adding. So for Q4 2024, so this is what's been worked on now, responsive design, the landing page, profile settings, you know, you guys can read what they've already done as well. So this is just a great way to see how they're going. And then if you are good at programming, you could even offer to help here, right? So anyway, that is what it looks like um, and how it works is pretty straightforward. So now I'm going to show you how you can get this all set up for yourself. So we've just jumped to my server now that's running docker and i'm going to have a link in the description as well to all of my docker compose and everything that i have here all the detailed steps as well on what i've done in this video a link will be in the description called docs.techdocs.nz okay and in there we'll have a step by step so i just want to show you so what they have here is that they do have a docker run command but i personally like to have docker compose files just because it's like a self documentation i can see how i deployed it it stays there and then i know what to do right so what i've done on my document documentation website is I will have a compose file for you so go there grab the compose file and then what you need to do is go onto your server and I've made a directory I always store all of my docker compose files within a directory of the service itself so I've made a directory called docker and then in there I've called it to duty right and then we'll just do a nano docker hyphen compose dot yaml and we'll hit enter and now I already have my YAML file in here, but again, go into my documentation if you'd rather use the compose uh, compared to the run command and you can just paste it straight in. So let's just quickly cover this. So we don't actually need version that's been deprecated. So we can just get rid of that. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using their latest image, right? And this is going to be running on port 9292. Now, if that port is already in use for you, feel free to change that to a port that's not in use. Now, Todoodi is going to be expecting a folder and that folder is going to be called Todoodi underscore DB. Okay, so we're going to make this folder and I've just used a full path of it's going to be in this directory. I could also change that to make it a bit cleaner rather than using the absolute path. I can just backspace this up a bit and I can just put a dot and that's saying that it's going to be in this directory where I'm at at the moment. 
Now, we've got to do the internal SSL enabled. Now, if you're going to use something like, you know, Nginx Proxy Manager and whatnot and expose this, then you can make this true so you can use SSL. We've got a session secret here. Coming back to the documentation, uh, it's optional if you want to use a session secret, but to generate one, you just run this command. And if I just quickly save this and back out, like you run this command here and it will give you one, right? So you just copy that. Again, all this will be in my documentation as well. And you just paste it in the session secret and then that's it. And then you've got the username and password, right? So your password here, make sure to change this. And if you're using a compose file, you could actually make this a, a variable instead. So you don't actually have to have your credentials in your compose. And then you've got the username email as well. So make sure to change all of this, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to leave this as default. But we're going to copy that name there because we're going to make this folder. So I'm going to save this. Now what we're going to do is make a directory called to duty underscore DB, hit enter. Now we're doing ls and now we can see we've got to duty and we've got our compose file, right? So providing that you've got your compose file, you've got the, the directory there, it should be empty. So you can do uh, ls to duty and make sure there's nothing in there. We'll clear the screen up a bit and now we can do docker compose up hyphen D. And this is going to grab everything in that compose file and spin it up for us. And now it should be all up and running. A good way to check that your container is all right for this one anyways, we can just do a docker compose logs and check if this looks right. If you see this here listening on port, that means it's all up and running. And there we go. So now we're at the login screen here. So we need to just put those credentials in. I'll just put those temporary details in. I'll hit login. And there we go. And if you might've seen that I had a bit of a white page there for a second, I just hit refresh and then it came right. So just remember a lot of this is still in development, right? But the base here is here and I really just want to get you aware of this, this product. And if you're interested in it, feel free to use it, show the uh, developers some support as well. And yeah. Now, if you have any questions, jump into the discord, I'm more than happy to help you with this. Um, and again, my documentation is in the description as well as their GitHub. So you can check out their documentation as well. But again, thank you so much for all the support. Thank you to all the subscribers. Uh, thank you to all the YouTube members and all the Discord's community members as well. You guys are awesome. Uh, but yeah, that's to duty, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.